after getting all of the achievements for Assassin's Creed Mirage a few weeks back and really experiencing all that the game has to offer, I wanted to discuss the game's various components and really work to break down whether this so-called return to form for this long-running franchise is really what it was perceived as and whether it truly lives up to its name. Assassin's Creed Mirage is a game that has had mixed reception both critically and amongst fans of the franchise and although it is a very flawed game, there is a lot to love about the game and based on my overview or review of the game in this video, hopefully you'll be able to make an educated decision as to whether this game is worth it for you personally. There will be two sections for the story discussion in this video, one without spoilers and one with. So just be wary of that as you watch the video, but I'll put a warning on when that happens. If you enjoy this type of content, consider subbing to the channel and let's get right into it. It's very hard to claim that Assassin's Creed Mirage from a presentation value doesn't look great. This is built off the bones and core of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and despite all of the shortcomings of that game, its various landmarks and locations did look look absolutely amazing. So it's no surprise to me that this game looks just as amazing and arguably much better due to the focus on a smaller location opposed to the vastness of a world such as Valhalla's. The city of Baghdad is much more detailed and specific than the cities of Valhalla's. The great landmarks such as the Great Mosque and the House of Wisdom are great additions that work well to immerse you into 9th century Persia unlike any other game based in the same setting. One thing I do have to complain about is the utter lack of any true value in the outskirts of the city. I really do love the return to one singular and large city in Assassin's Creed Mirage. The city is vibrant with colour and various locations of which make it feel distinct when compared to the bland cities of this game's predecessor. But the desert locations that are spread across the game's open world have nothing to them. They feel bland and uninspired. There's no landmarks or locations within the desert outskirts that make them feel unique to a typical desert in any other video game. And it's kind of disappointing, especially with a game that looks as good as Mirage. Free roam around this world is fun, but once you get out of the city, the game's presentational value fails to to grab you to the same extent due to the utter blandness of locations outside of the city. This however isn't a deal breaker for me personally as the beautiful architecture and buildings that encompass the city of Baghdad are at the core of the game's presentation and they look stunning in every department. This world is one of beauty and this recreation of a distant time is one of the best I've seen and it does feel like the game has harkened back to the cities of old games in how it is presented and how it is the focus of the game overall. Even the UI here has been mostly simplified from the confusing systems of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Valhalla's skill tree was so incredibly confusing and weird that navigating it was a definite chore, but Assassin's Creed Mirage simplifies all of that, making it easy to understand and to grasp, so you always know what you're upgrading. In addition to this, the simplification of the gear system to only a few different armor sets or weapons makes the UI and inventory systems within this game here feel much simpler than prior entries which is much appreciated. One glaring problem with the presentational value of this game however is the very stiff animations within cutscenes with facial animations and dialogue looking even worse than Assassin's Creed Valhalla and there's been no visible improvements to such animations. They feel so robotic and weird looking and it's something that needs definite improvement in future Assassin's Creed games because these animations are not up to the industry standard in any department and need to be urgently fixed so that Assassin's Creed can continue evolving into the next generation of games. I think this is what everyone is waiting to hear about in terms of what Assassin's Creed Mirage adds to the series. Is it really a return to form in terms of stealth and parkour? Valhalla encapsulated a large departure from the series stealth roots with no areas or situations in the game particularly designed for stealth which felt even more depressing when the game had an awesome intro with a hidden blade and your hood but ended up doing nothing with it. Mirage is by every account a return to form in terms of stealth for the series. Mirage completely understands stealth in Assassin's Creed and harkens the game back to the series roots with every mission designed with stealth in mind and every aspect of the game feeling like it was handcrafted for stealth to always be a major factor. 
I'd even argue that not doing stealth in this game makes the game dramatically harder, as the game's missions and targets are all designed in a fashion that stealth feels like the primary proprietor within these missions. Honestly, for me, Mirage is one of the best instances of stealth in an Assassin's Creed game. It has everything you want in terms of stealth from these games, with locations and buildings specifically laid out in a way that you can infiltrate them in a stealthy manner steal or kill whatever you need and get out of there without being spotted. This was something that was almost impossible to do in Assassin's Creed Valhalla and that's so obvious by the game's design of its vast locations that made stealth more of a chore than a mechanic that added to the immersion of the game's state. But playing Mirage allows you to feel the glory of the stealth system in this franchise and I'd argue it is one of my favourite in the series in terms of its stealth mechanics. I think this is mainly amplified by the game's addition of tools from prior games, such as smoke bombs and throwing knives, of which makes the stealth in this game that much more fun. The tools really do diversify the stealth in this game, and make the encounters a lot better as you can really mix up the different tools you'll be using in your approach to take down a target, which can make each kill much different from the last if you pull it off correctly. Of course, like other Assassin's Creed games, this diversity depends on the player, and every kill can feel the same if you aren't really using these tools in a varied manner, which is something that can definitely occur. However, overall the stealth of Assassin's Creed Mirage is back to a step in the right direction and is absolutely amazing. Before I wrap up this section, we have to talk about the parkour of this game. I won't discuss it for too long, as I'm not really an expert at Assassin's Creed parkour, and I'm honestly quite bad at it when when compared to other people, but I definitely felt something was wrong with the last three games and their parkour. Mirage is heralded as a return to form for a series that was built on the core of its parkour and stealth mechanics, and the parkour system has been simplified to oblivion over the years. Assassin's Creed Mirage is built on the same engine as Valhalla, and although there are many improvements to the parkour system within this game, it fails to capture the true essence of the parkour system's prior games, very much held back by the engine it was developed on. If you're expecting the parkour system of games such as Unity or even older games such as the Ezio Trilogy, in terms of the control the parkour system lends you, this game will not deliver on that. However, there are notable improvements in this game's parkour system. System compared to something like Valhalla. Basim feels much lighter than the heavier Eivor, and this reflects in the smoothness of the game's parkour system in a major way. And what really helps the parkour in this game is the fact that the city itself has been so obviously designed to traverse with parkour, making it a breeze to parkour and roam around the city. Overall, the stealth of this game is absolutely fantastic, and while the parkour fails to truly capture the magic of prior games, it definitely is a step back in the right direction of which can be built on for future games. Frankly, the combat system of this game isn't great. I'm not going to sugarcoat the parts of the game that need a lot of work and aren't great, and the combat system of the game is definitely one of those aspects. This is only saved by the fact that stealth is so well designed that most players won't engage in the combat as much as the other RPG games, but that doesn't excuse very much. When I heard this game would be a return to form for the series, one of the things I really hoped would return is the counter-focused combat of prior games. I know a lot of people are sick of this system, but it felt so cinematic and fun, although it was extremely simple. And if there was to be a game that would harken back to those days, I really hoped it would bring back the system. But instead, Mirage has one of the series' most simplified and dumbed-down combat systems, with having no depth in any department and is much more parry focused and simplistic than even the older games. What made the older games and their combat so much fun was the flashy animations and finishes within combat that made it feel so good to play. But Mirage lacks many of those animations, making the combat here less gratifying. I tried to avoid direct combat as much as I could in the game because frankly it wasn't very fun. It's one of the biggest gripes I have with an otherwise decent package and it needs definite improvement in future games, especially when the core foundation of stealth and the return to form mechanics have been integrated well into this game. So don't come into the game expecting the flashy combat of the older games, because sadly it isn't here, replaced with a much less robust and fun system that makes combat way less engaging than prior games in the series. As this section will not contain any spoilers, I'm just going to be using a story trailer for the game as I'm discussing my points. I'll just go ahead and say it, Mirage has 
a very meh story. And this was so hugely disappointing for a character that was featured in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, whose mysterious and intriguing character development made me think that having his origin story would actually be pretty cool. The only problem is, Ubisoft does nothing to build on Basim's character, with him having a lack of strong character moments, except for a few exceptions sprinkled throughout the main story's 15 hour runtime. It's greatly disappointing and I feel that there was so much potential to build on his character, of which would have greatly expanded his purpose in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but the story in this game is just so serviceable, nothing remarkable and nothing great without being offensively bad. It's such a disjointed story and nothing here feels extremely cohesive, making the whole game's story feel like a background to accelerate the gameplay components of which are actually really good. So don't expect to have a story as great as the Ezio trilogy, because Mirage unfortunately doesn't deliver in that aspect. Although this will contain spoilers, it won't be a very long section, because there isn't very much to talk about for this game's story. The main reason is because there was nothing very memorable about the game's story, and a few weeks passed, I can't really remember much from the game's story as I only really remember the fun I had with the gameplay mechanics and the game's overall stealth prowess. The story in this game collapses very easily. It feels cohesive in the first few hours, especially in the intro with the hidden ones and becoming trained to be an assassin. Then it falls apart completely, as the game is splintered into three different areas or paths you need to go on, which makes the game lose all of its cohesion in the story component. There are really no strong side characters other than Nahal, who isn't really that strong of a character, but her prominence makes her much more significant than other side characters within the game. But most disappointing by this lack of cohesion in the story is how Basim seems to lack any core character moments that differentiates him from other protagonists of prior games and gives him a unique identity other than being that one guy who was an assassin in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The game's story then does pick up again during the last couple of hours, but the fact that it feels so disconnected makes it feel much less memorable than it could have been. The whole core point of Basim realizing that he is greater than man was also really weirdly done, and the execution of his discovery wasn't all that great either, which is extremely disappointing considering that's one of the main prospects of his character overall. I don't really know what else to say about the story. It is what it is, and at its worst, it's serviceable, and at its very best, it's meh. I hope you enjoyed the video and were able to make up your mind about whether or not to purchase or play this game. I'd recommend it, especially if you'd like a return to form and it's cheaper than a normal triple A release and is already on sale quite frequently, so finding a good deal shouldn't be much of a problem. Anyway, that's all from me for today. If you enjoyed, consider subbing to the channel and dropping a like, and until next time, peace.